Thank you for your written word that it is light to us as well as to our brains. Pray now as we go into the, this next session that you would be our focus and that uh, your glory would be the purpose of our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord and the power of the Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's have another song. Pastor, from your pastor. Start with. Yes, yeah. More like you. Truth. Our lives are to be controlled by truth, 
as revealed in God's word. When we know truth so well, we will be able to recognise the lies that we are told, the lies that are disguising themselves as truth. Hmm. And then there is righteousness. We are to live a righteous life. As Christians, we have already been declared righteous before God. We have to live it. When we started as a Christian disciple before God, we were given the righteousness of Jesus, which we were talking about during the group time, weren't we? But that righteousness needs to be lived out in our lives. If it isn't, that's when old hairy leg Satan tries to come about and attack us. Then there's the gospel. Be ready to share it and rely upon it. Because we have peace with God, we are able to withstand without fear the attacks of old hairy legs, the enemy. We have peace with God, but we are also to exhibit peace with other people. Where peace is, the discord of our enemy cannot prevail. Then there is faith. Show total trust in God in your life. The faith we have is a defensive weapon against the mistruths that come into our head. The lies, the blasphemy, the lust, the greed, the selfishness, all our little darts thrown by old hairy legs to prick us. But by maintaining our, God's, our trust in God's promises and God's power, these little darts are extinguished. Thanks God. Mm. Then there's salvation, the assurance of our salvation. Be assured. That's why I put the assurance as number one. Let your mind be controlled by the Holy Spirit who lives in you so that you are not led astray. Use your minds. That's why we have them. Your salvation rests in nothing apart from God's promises and Jesus' righteousness. Then there's the Bible. We need to read it, and study it, and what's more, to live it. What was Jesus' main weapon against Satan when Satan came to attack him? He quoted scripture. That's why we are to study it, learn from it, and trusting the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Sometimes we forget that. He lives within us to lead us and reveal it to us. And we're to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus according to Peter in 2 Peter 3 verse 18. And that's only through achieved through studying the Bible. That's when we hear that nagging little voice that says, God didn't say that. We can say, too right, mate, he did. Well, I would anyway. I don't know what your particular vernacular would be. And then lastly, there's prayer. We need to talk to God, not just for half hour in the morning or half hour in the evening, but through the day. That's how we're energised. Fighting in our own power is useless. When we talk to God, we strengthen our relationship with him. The bonds are strengthened. When we ask other people to pray for us, church unity is strengthened. Particularly if it's people from another church. Because when churches get together and they pray together, <coughs> church unity is strengthened. And a solo Christian is an anomaly. There is no such thing, really. Except in extreme circumstances, there is always a way to ask for prayer and for help. So, how do we put on this armour? Not that way, that way. Thank you. How do we put it on? It's not through some mystical, deep and secret process. If it were, not many of us would be wearing it, would we? It's revealed when we resist the works of Satan... And we don't listen to the lies that he tells us in, his head, in our head. When our marriages reflect the sacrificial love that, that Jesus has for the church, our spiritual armour is displayed. When children are taught the gospel and instructed in the ways of the Lord, our spiritual armour is being worn. When we are diligent in the workplace, our spiritual armour is exhibited. When God is glorified in your life, you are wearing the spiritual armour. When you're living fruitful lives for God and giving all glory and honour to him without compromise, we show we are wearing the spiritual armour. We can stand up for Jesus 
and we can say with all honesty and integrity that he is our Lord and our Master, not just our friend. When we meditate on God's word, we nourish our minds with the truth of salvation. When we tell others of this message of peace with God, our enemies flee. When we ask others to pray for us as Paul did, we show we are part of the universal church, which is the beautiful bride of Jesus. All these and more reflect that as Christian disciples, we are clothed in this spiritual armour. It's our own responsibility to wear it, and we are to use it with confidence. We are to be alert to the prowling of our enemies and relying solely on God's power to overcome sin and temptation. Because if we try to do it in our own power, more than likely or not, we'll succumb. But by using God's strength and being clothed in his armour, we will prevail and overcome. We will be the overcomers. The Christian disciple prevails and is an overcomer when reliant solely upon the God they seek to serve wholeheartedly. So again, there's some questions in the handout. 